Today's episode of Real Ghost Stories Online is brought to you by Blue Apron. Check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash ghost. There was definitely something that happened to these people that, that was earth shattering and completely has shaken up their lives. If you want access to the best real ghost stories. I think she was afraid that they were going to make her little friend go away. Real accounts of the dead coming back to life. She had a spirit that she had gotten very close with. Real video and images of ghosts. A little boy. Then you need to be an extra podcast person, also known as an EPP. Sign up to be one for only $5 a month at ghostpodcast.com. I stared transfixed as the mist began to gradually become more solid and translucent and to my shock more human in appearance your support is what keeps our show on the air for only five dollars you'll have access to hundreds of epp exclusive episodes updated weekly exclusive video content and more behind me in my kitchen i hear a little girl say are you my daddy where's my daddy keep us on the air and get access to the best ghost stories and more now at ghostpodcast.com and thanks for your support stories online call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com you're about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead this is real ghost stories online that indeed it is the phone number 855-853-4802 to share your real ghost story with us of course you can write in on the website realghoststoriesonline.com or you can email me your audio file and send it to tony t-o-n-y at realghoststoriesonline.com so lots of ways to get your stories to us on today's episode calls your stories uh, that way looking forward to uh to hearing those of course if you want to interact with us uh you can uh, comment on any of our shows we do a lot of that up there on facebook real ghost stories online find us there twitter at ghost story radio instagram at ghost podcast and snapchat at ghost podcast lots of creepy photos uh being posted on uh, a lot of those platforms over the last uh well by the time you hear this uh, the ones we're, re- we're referencing today uh would have been posted uh around the like 17th 18th right around there uh-huh. of uh what is it march march yeah <laughs> 2017 um so if you're catching this in in 2020 and you're like oh my god i want to see those pictures uh page back to 2017 and uh right around march uh 17th 18th right i think it was the 18th uh was the day that we posted uh, quite a few creepy uh ones of a lovely little homestead Mm-hmm. that uh, we were driving by. And uh, I, I, what's awesome about this area is there's just so many of these places. Uh, and it's just, these go back. These are not just like, oh, there's the abandoned house that was probably let go in 85 and now cats reside there. These are like way back. Yeah. It's just like little house on the prairie back. Some of them, a lot of them, you know, Great Depression got them. Yeah. And, and these, I mean, it, it's amazing what uh, a lot of these folks had. I mean, they're, they're not large buildings by any means, but there's sheer numbers in, of buildings in a lot of the homesteads because there was, they had to have a building for doing this and have a building for doing that and mm-hmm. a building for this. So it's, it's almost like, it's like you're walking into a little, uh, little town in some of these uh these yeah. homesteads that exist. Only reference I, I can make, um, I mean, if you're familiar with how that looks historically, then you know what I'm talking about. Uh, if you're wanting a more creepy aspect and you played video games, it's kind of like going into some of the areas in uh, the video game Resident Evil 4, uh, where it's it's kind of <laughs> shacks of that nature. Mm-hmm. And there's creepy, you know, there's no creepy zombies chasing me around, but there might as well uh, be in some cases. Yeah. Um, so we're driving down the road, and uh, we already knew the road that we were not going to name the road or anything like that because we don't want to like send people uh, to a place that they, they shouldn't be. And we never go past no trespassing signs. That's kind of our rule of if we see that, okay, that's fine. But if there is no no trespassing sign and it's not like digging into someone's you know property you know far, if it's just like right there, it, it's you know you can look. Um, so wanted to take some pictures of this little house. Uh-huh. Essentially, that you you've saw or you've seen, I had not seen it before. That was just on the corner of this road, and I didn't even know it was there. So we stop. You want to go and take a picture? 
sure, I'll just go take a picture. It's right there. Yeah, just I passed it a couple yeah. times, and I'm always scouting out creepy places for yeah. pictures for the show. There's no no trespassing signs up. There's no one that lives there and probably hasn't for 60, 70, 80 years. And it's right on the edge yeah. of this road. You're so, not going way back. Yeah. So it was a way, it was very easy just to, to essentially walk through the ditch and then take a picture. So I did, like, yeah, that looks really neat. I'm going to go take a picture of that. Um, so went and <laughs> took uh, some pictures of, of the little area. It was just, it was kind of grown over in some spots and then some spots remarkably not, like remarkably just paths and almost as if like, oh, this is, but maybe it's because other people do go back there and take pictures too. I don't know. Uh-huh. Um, but I, I went back and I, I, I did feel just kind of calm. I didn't feel really creeped out. It was kind of a nice sunny day, but, uh, there was a lot of buildings, uh, everything from a chicken coop to like this little basementy cell ish area, um, that I thought was probably just a garage with no roof anymore. That was kind of built into a hill. Um, and or the- store things to keep them cooler yeah a lot of places do that sure there, there was it could have been like a root cellar mm-hmm. um there was uh you know we tell what were barns and some sort of uh, some other outbuildings the house itself was gone um but you could see the foundation and so i took some pictures and you can see those up on facebook and and they're good and creepy um and that's all i knew of it and then we we left and uh, at lunch you started looking up the place and uh i started googling the area mm-hmm. to see if i could figure out whose homestead it sure. was and i always want to know the hip, yeah. the backstory just like when you guys share stories i always want to know the backstory yeah. so i'm doing this and and i start to find some pretty disturbing things and and these are not confirmed yet this no. is a lot of I, uh, to me, it's still falling into the urban legend territory because I haven't found anything confirmed on it yet, nor have I dug other than Googling. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do want to dig a little bit more. But So the urban legend, without saying the names of anybody or yeah. any locations, what's the, the urban legend story of the property? That a family, it was a husband and a wife and a little girl that lived there, and there was something not quite right, not quite right with the little girl mm-hmm. back in the day before they really you know before you could get help yeah yeah and knew what that was and so instead of letting her you know have a a fairly normal life they pretty much kept her prisoner Mm -hmm. in a kind of sunken room with bars on the windows yeah allegedly allegedly and uh anyway she had enough and killed them both allegedly disappeared (laughs) and disappeared so that's the story and then because of the legend of that you know it it apparently was a popular teenage hangout Mm -hmm. through like the 80s and 90s you know when that story kind of i guess resurfaced and and the house had since burned down and it's either because somebody burned it down on purpose to stop it from being an attraction Mm -hmm. or kids burned it down on accident being out there so that's kind of the story. Either way, creepy, creepy story. Yeah. Um, and and being out there, it, I don't know. I, I like I said, I didn't get any vibes. I usually don't. I'm not the first to pick up on a lot of those things though either. But uh, it was just like, oh, oh gosh. And I'm wondering if any of the story is true or what parts are. Or what's the inspiration for this? Or if this is just one big bullshit teenage story that. You know, you tell the next generation to freak them out, and ooh, we're gonna go out to this area. Anyway, it's the the stuff of like uh, you know childhood legends, mm-hmm. if you will. Uh, but the fact that the setting does exist, what I found with a lot of like childhood legends and 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 rumors and things of that nature is, they'd say you know oh you know you go out there and then this is over there, um, and, and not much of it would be there uh-huh. uh, if if anything, or like the big bridge you know that supposedly does this or that you know you're, you're picturing this big covered bridge and it's just like a little concrete slab. Yeah. Um, the the fact that one could tell this story to another generation, and then that generation could go out there and take a look at this and oh my god this this whole area exists and the sunken yeah room it's creepy if that's what it was yeah. so anyway pictures are up and i'm gonna do a little more digging uh in the area to see if i can find anything to to validate the story or debunk it either way it's creepy yeah so there you go you want to see some creepy stuff that's up on the website uh 855-853-4802 is our phone number here at real ghost stories online to share your real ghost story with us and before we get into our uh next call here uh 
Blue Apron, these guys have been uh, now supporting the show for, for quite a while. We've been using them for even longer, and it's just, it's good stuff, especially, uh, you know, summer's coming around. It's uh, well, soon, hopefully. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's getting warmer. It was like 90 today, so it feels like summer. Um, but as all that comes around, you got, you know, the kids are doing this, they're doing that. You know, the grocery store, not the easiest thing. Uh, with Blue Apron, the ingredients, the fresh, high-quality ingredients, they show up on your doorstep with full color instruction pages that are so easy to follow. Even if you're not a great cook, this will make you a great cook. It's uh, It couldn't be easier, and it's very, very affordable with uh, meals uh, coming in uh, less than $10 uh, per person. It's it's just good stuff, and a lot of variety in what you can get as well. We've been using it now, like I said, for, for about two years or so, and uh, just really... Uh, really quality stuff. You can check out this week's uh, menu and get your first three meals absolutely free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash ghost. Uh, some of the uh, the stuff that they have uh, this this month on the menu, spinach and feta mozzarella pizza with olives, bell peppers, and ricotta, uh, sweet and sour salmon with bok choy, carrots, and uh, ginger fried rice, Parmesan crusted chicken with creamy fettuccine and roasted broccoli, uh, baby broccoli and fen uh, fontina uh, paninis with hard boiled egg and arugula salad. It's good stuff. It's it's it tastes good, and uh, you know it's better than I think almost anything you can get at a restaurant in in most cases. Uh, so anyway, check it out right now. Blueapron.com uh, and uh, uh, slash a ghost. Get your first three meals free with free shipping. Uh, blueapron.com slash ghost. You'll love how good it feels. It tastes. Create incredible home-cooked meals. Blue Apron. Don't wait. Blueapron.com slash ghost. Blue Apron. A better way to cook. Check it out and help support uh, the folks who keep us on the air. Uh, let's go to caller. Hi. Hi, Tony and Jenny. My name is Daniel, uh, and I'm from Danbury, North Carolina. It's my little tongue. You probably don't know where it is. Um, anyway, I called in um, a few months ago, not long after I found the show, uh, and I shared a few stories. Um, one was a bunk bed story, and um, the other was about me seeing this little creature walk across my uh, the threshold of my door. Uh, and it, I mean, it was like really short. It had like three horns, and I think it was holding a cane or something. Thought it was my brother. Uh, anyway, I actually have a another kind of longer ghost story for you. And I just heard on one of your more recent podcasts that um, you were making a book. I'm not sure if that's already passed or anything. But, uh, yeah, I totally love uh, this story to be considered into the book. Because uh, it is a pretty lengthy one, sort of. Uh, but anyway, I'll just get right into it. Um, so I was told the story um, from my dad when I was 15. Uh, my real dad lives in Lexington, North Carolina, and he's got a house that's, it's not really a double wide, it's just like a regular, you know, three bedroom, one bathroom house. Uh, so it's not too big, but it's not too small. Um, anyway, there's a hallway in the back of it, and... When you walk down this hallway, the first door on your left is the bathroom. Right across the bathroom is was my old room. Uh, if you keep going down the hall just a few feet, to the left was his old bedroom uh, when I was younger. And to the very back right was a room we called the green room because it had green carpet, green paint on the walls. It was a really ugly room. Uh, but we called it the green room. Anyway, um... He told me that every morning when I was younger, uh, and I used to sleep in my crib at his house, that um, he would wake up and hear me like, you know, calling for him or talking or just like, you know, crying or something. And he would, you know, wake up at like seven o'clock in the morning, like, hey buddy, uh, what are you doing? Like ready to get up and stuff and I'd be like yeah and this was like when I was like one two years old obviously I was in a crib um well two things he told me he said one thing happened a while back was 
he heard like a thud and I was probably like one at the time so you know I I mean I don't know how agile one-year-olds are with climbing uh, I'm sure some are better than others but he said he came like running into the room and I was just like sitting in the middle of the floor out of my crib just like playing with my toys and he had no idea how I mean he thought the thud was me like falling out of my crib and I mean the, the walls of a crib they're, they're pretty tall I mean like it, that's a pretty long fall for a baby uh, for one thing uh, but you know either way he kind of wrote it off and I did too at the time now it's kind of weird but the next thing is the creepier thing and I wouldn't really call myself too sensitive uh, but I've had a few things happen to me I've got a few more ghost stories that I'm gonna call in and share um, but anyway the uh, main thing was that one morning I was in my crib uh, it was about six seven o'clock in the morning uh, he heard me talking again you know he, he didn't really think too much of it but he just sat and kind of listened for a minute I wasn't crying and I wasn't like just yelling or anything but I was talking like I was having a conversation I was probably like one and a half two years old I was probably about two and uh, he kind of you know listened for about 30 seconds and then he got up and he walked in there and I was like standing at the edge of my crib like with my arms over it and I was looking at the doorway and he was like hey buddy uh, who are you talking to and I was like where'd she go he's like who are, you, who are you talking about I was like the girl the little girl in the green dress like where did she go and he just kind of like he was pretty creeped out by that obviously because uh, he's a believer in ghosts and stuff and he was like there is no little girl like and I was like yeah she she was just right there she was talking to me and I think he asked me like what she said but uh, he couldn't remember what I had said unfortunately uh, that would have been really cool if he'd known uh, but anyway so you know years go by and you know I, I don't think I ever uh, he ever heard or saw of the green girl uh, the girl in the green dress so that was a little creepy but the creepiest part was when I was about 17 we were cleaning out the green room and you know I walk we walk back there and there's they have these old closet doors that are like in the walls like that slide or whatever they don't open out they just slide and there's like I don't know two or three feet of wall I mean of like shelves and stuff that you could put your stuff in and uh, so we were just like cleaning that closet out back there and stuck behind one of the drawers was a picture and I mean you can already guess like I picked it up and it was a little girl like five years old uh, or she looked five years old and like I, I looked at the picture and it she was like blonde haired uh, she had a little bow I can't remember what color it was I think it was white uh, but she had like a little green and white frilly dress on and like white socks with those black like church shoes that little girls wear and I just had this like wave of I don't know who this girl is like it's just like Kathy like that was just the first word in my mind like it was Kathy just I don't know why um, and like I turned around and on the back and it said it said like K Sylvester or something like Kathy Sylvester it just said K dot Sylvester and it said I think it was 1973 and then it had a dash and it said 1980 so like from 1973 to 1980 I guess that was like her age and she had passed away when she was seven years old uh, I don't know and then like the family before had kept a picture of her and lost it because the way we found this picture it was like 
you know, not really stuff, but it looked like it fell off the top of something and got wedged back there. So maybe when the people moved out, they didn't see it. Um, I didn't really do any uh, <clears throat> research into the house before uh, it was like before my dad got it and everything. But obviously there was a family beforehand. Um, I'm not sure like if they like if they were the ones that uh, had the little girl and she passed away or even if they relayed that information to my dad whenever he bought the house uh, but either way I thought it was really creepy and the worst part of it was was I was 15 years old so I had just kind of like uh, I was still kind of scared of stuff like because I didn't know a lot but uh, we were the only ones in this house me and my dad so that night I was so creeped out like I was, just, I was like why did you tell me this story like now I'm gonna be freaking out thinking there's gonna be a little dead girl dead ghost girl coming into my room and like whenever my dad like I don't I don't talk to my dad anymore um, but he didn't have heat in his house he would have this like little bitty tiny electrical heater he would just like put at the edge of my doorway and like pray to God that would like heat my pretty decently sized room up and it never did so it was always freezing cold in there like it was down in the low 50s some nights uh, especially on like winter nights I would I would have like an army blanket on but it would always be so cold in that room and you could just like even if you didn't believe in ghosts or if you'd never heard of a ghost story, you would always be creeped out in that house. It was just so quiet and in the woods. and So I could totally understand if, you know, something creepy was going on down there. Uh, but I have a few ghost, a few more ghost stories involving uh, me staying with my dad. And I'll talk about those in another episode. I uh, love you guys' show. Uh, thank you for listening to my ghost story and I hope it can be put into your book if it's long enough and uh, either way I wish you guys a Merry Christmas uh, it's like mid-December when I'm sending this in so I don't know how long it's going to be before you guys play this uh, but I hope it's soon uh, thank you guys love your show see you later bye happy Easter happy Easter <laughs> So uh, there you go. So, I mean, some uh, it's interesting. Some calls uh, are are that far back, mm -hmm. and some you know, honestly, I think what happened with that one is because I don't think we're quite back into December with a lot of calls. Uh, but sometimes when we do a show, a, a call gets bumped to the next show, to the next show. Especially and, if it's a longer one. Yeah, and that was a longer one, and I think it might have been bumped for several episodes, and that's where it ended up uh, going. So yeah. uh, creepy stuff. I completely think it's a human ghost when you can look at a picture and it's the person that you are seeing within the house mm -hmm. and then you suddenly know things about them like he knew the name mm -hmm. you know i don't think there's anything really malicious there it's just a little girl that's still around and nothing malicious happened either no i mean sometimes where you get the malicious things but hey it seems to resemble a human that that was here at one time what's going on with that sometimes i think things things can certainly take that form to to feel safe but in this case i think it really just was mm -hmm. a little ghost girl that you got there so thanks for the call and the story 855-853-4802 is our number here at real ghost stories online hi my two-year-old daughter at the time she was two was always seeing things uh we moved into our first real home and we were saying prayers and and all of that and she says uh mommy the, the little girl won't stop talking. And I'm like, Tee, that's so cute. You know, she must have an imaginary friend. And I said, well, is she still here talking right now? And she said, yes, and I can't pray with her talking. And I said, okay, little girl, you be quiet now. And my daughter says, okay, she, she's quiet. And we continued with our prayers. And I could see by looking at my daughter's face, she was scared. You know, that kind of haunted look they get with the, the big eyes and they're very still and I said is the little girl still here so now I'm starting to get creeped out and she says yes and I said well where is she and of course the child has to say behind you so naturally I look behind me really quickly I see nothing but I've got chills all over me I can't hardly think and I'm getting really scared and I said well what does she look like 
and she described her. She described her dress, the color of her hair, and remember, the kid's only two, so she's only seen so many things. And I said, all right, little girl, you have to leave right now. And I looked at my daughter, and I said, is she gone? And my daughter says, yes, okay. So I think that's the end of it. Maybe she's got an active imagination. Okay. So the entire time that we lived in that house, my daughter would be saying, shut up, be quiet, in the middle of the night. And I'd be saying, Mia, go to sleep. Time for bed. Stop talking. Because I'm thinking she's playing with her stuffed animals or something. And finally she says, well, she won't be quiet. The little girl won't be quiet. And I asked her if the little girl had a name. The little girl's name was Sarah. I called the landlord. The landlord said he'd never heard anything like this. And he probably thought I was crazy because I was asking him if anyone had passed away in the house or if any other tenants had said anything like this. So eventually we moved, and I thought, okay, good, no more little girls talking to my daughter in the middle of the night. The next place we moved was by far the worst. We had a, we moved in with my in-laws and really old, old farmhouse. And my daughter's comes, to, my daughter comes in crying to me. There's a dog out the window. Well, it's a farmhouse, that makes sense. So, you know, maybe she was looking out the window and saw a dog in the yard. She's not afraid of dogs. I don't know why she would say that, but we go and we look out the window and I say, do you still see the dog, honey? And she's like, oh, yes, he's right there. And I'm like, right where? And I'm not seeing a dog or anything. And she says, right there. And I said, do you mean on the ground outside? And she says, no, he's in the window. And finally, I understand she doesn't mean he's standing in the window. He's floating outside the window. And I say, and of course, I'm totally creeped out. And I say, okay, so the dog's floating around outside your window right now yes okay well it, that's even worse than a little girl I don't want a dog floating out the window so to make a long story short I had her sleep in my room and she said there's no dog in this room oh good <laughs> glad to hear that move on to the next house we move into our next house was even worse I'm standing at the kitchen window doing dishes and now I have another child um, my two-year-old has now become four, so we've fast-forwarded several years. My four-year-old is playing in the yard. I'm watching her through the kitchen window. We do have a dog now. He's a big protective dog. There's a six-foot privacy fence around the yard. I see my oldest four-year-old playing, and the two-year-old youngest is just out of sight. And I'm watching my daughter, and I see the color just drain from her face. And she's looking in the direction of the door, the way that I would leave the kitchen to go out to the backyard where the kids are. And it frightened me. It was so um, apparent that she saw something scary that I thought maybe her sister had fallen down or something. So I rush out there and I say, honey, what's wrong? And she says, the dog. And so I think, okay, maybe our dog is hurt. And I call the dog and the dog comes and and I see that her sister's playing, and her sister's okay. She's, you know, playing with, with whatever she's got. And and my oldest daughter says, I have to go in, I have to go in. So we go inside, and I say, honey, what, what did you see? And she says, I saw a dog, and he had black eyes. And I'm like, you saw a dog with black eyes? I'm like, well, was it Cody? Was it our dog? And she says, no, it was a yellow dog with black eyes. And he growled at me. And so we, you know, kind of blew that off. And then, uh, as we continued to stay in that house, things got worse and worse. We had, uh, we would wake up in the morning and all the cabinets in the kitchen would be open. We had it to where, and the electrician came out uh, numerous times. Nothing was ever wrong when he came out. All of the lights in the house would go out except the lights in my bedroom and the hallway light. That's it. All the other lights would, were out. They would not work. There were no fuses blown. There was nothing wrong with the electricity. Everything else was fine. We had the electrician out a million times. Um, and when the cabinets were open, we just closed them all up again. My four-year-old daughter started having nightmares 
and she would be crying and saying things like, she's going to get hurt, she's going to get hurt, and she would sleepwalk. Um, my youngest daughter started seeing things, saw um, a child sitting at our table doing homework, thought it was a real person, asked me who, who was over and why they were doing their homework at our house. I saw no one. Um, I had two roommates, and the male roommate, who was dating uh, my friend, uh, would take a shower, and he got three scratches on his shoulder, more than once. Another time, they had gone to bed, and they heard growling, so he turned on the light, thinking it was our dog. The dog wasn't in there, and he heard it again. Both of them came racing out of the bedroom. Uh, another time, uh, same thing, they came racing out of the bedroom, and I went back there to investigate, because that's just silly. And I, it sounds crazy to say it, I know it sounds crazy, but I'm telling you, it's real, it really happened. On the sheets, there were little tiny handprints, like, like a child's handprints, and they were, they were, it looked like bloody handprints all over the sheets, where they had just been laying. They were just there. There was they, they were just there. They heard the growl. They came running out. Another time when the electricity was out, except in my bedroom, um, my my roommate and I went in there and I said, "Okay, if this is really a ghost, turn off the light. Since you love lights, the light went off." And I'm like, oh, "Okay." And I said, "All right, turn it back on. Turn back on." And I did this twice in a row and I said alright third time's the charm if there's really someone here it's going to happen a third time and I said alright turn off the light light went off and at that point my roommate ran and screamed out of the room I'm in a dark room and I said turn the light back on it turned back on and then I ran and screamed also <laughs> out of the room um, so now we've got a dark house except my bedroom in the hallway of course the lights don't work um Another time I was sleeping in my room, and again, this is one of those things that sounds crazy, but it really did happen. I don't tell people about this because they think I'm crazy. Uh, I heard growling. I was not asleep. I was in bed. I was going to sleep. And I sat up in bed, and I looked at the corner where I heard the growling, and for all the world, I saw a werewolf. It was, or it looked like a werewolf. It was this big, dark, looking like it's furry shape, and it had red eyes, and it growled again. And I was so terrified, I couldn't move. I was sitting up, so I wasn't laying down. Like, like in sleep paralysis, I was sitting up, and I couldn't move. And my daughters hear me, and they say, Mommy, are you okay? And I, I'm fine. My roommates hear me. They come running back. And I kept saying, you know, turn on the light, turn on the light, turn on the light. The one time my bedroom light doesn't turn on, because remember, the electricity thing affected every other room except mine. This time my light wouldn't turn on. And I kept saying, do you see it, do you see it? My roommate saw it, her boyfriend did not. And she says, oh, my God, a guy in the corner. And I said, he's big, he's big. And I couldn't, I still couldn't move. Like, I could turn and I could look at her. And so she and her, her boyfriend both climbed in the bed with me, and we closed our eyes and we prayed. So then we started putting um, Bibles open to the 23rd Psalm all throughout the house. Um, we actually went to church. We went to church to tell somebody. And we were there, and we stayed through the service. And at the end of the service, I was going up to talk to the preacher and I don't know what stopped me. I don't know why I, I didn't talk to him, but I didn't. It's kind of like when you live in a place like that for so long, or at least this is the running theory, you, you start to, like, get used to it. It's really scary, but it almost, I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of like when you sit on a couch and the couch kind of forms to your hiney and you're just used to sitting there. That's kind of what it's like. You just don't do anything. And so... We had all three gone to church with the intent of talking to the preacher, and all three of us walked right out, didn't say a word. Uh, we had a frequent shadow man visitor. He would, our front door was two French doors, and it had the, the windows so you could see someone walk up, and it had um, 
see-through curtains. So anytime someone walked up, you saw their shadow walk, you know, walk across in front of the glass windows, and then they would knock. It happened all the time. We would see someone come up to the door. They would knock. Nobody's there. It got to the point where we wouldn't even get up because we, we knew if we had company, all the company was already there. So there was one night we were actually expecting uh, someone to come over. Uh, my friend and I were sitting on the couch waiting, and knock, knock, knock. We saw the shadow. It looked. It was shaped like our friend that we were expecting. So we got up together. We looked at each other, and then we get to the door. We open the door. There's no one there. But not only is there no one there, but it's... We didn't open the door and see, like, the, the front yard and the porch and the little fence. We opened the door and saw nothing. Like, like it was completely black. We opened the door to nothingness. We both saw it. It happened to both of us. So it's not like, you know, I was having a dream and this is how the dream came about. We opened the door to blackness. And I said, you may not come in. And I closed the door. And my friend and I walked back to the couch, again, touching shoulders as we walked back to the couch. We both sat down in unison and we looked at each other and said, that was the shadow man. That was the shadow man. And this time we opened the door. And fast forward to Halloween. Okay, so we we decided for whatever reason that we were going to dabble in witchcraft. Okay, so there's now I have one, two, I have three three roommates. There's two girls and one guy. And so obviously this is going to cause even more problems. So we all cast a spell. Then we went uh, to the mall for trick-or-treating. Took the kids after the kids went trick-or-treating. Uh, we dropped them off at their dad's house. And while we were trick-or-treating, we went by the tuxedo shop, and we got our candy. And there's this guy there, and he's really cute, and he says hi to me. And I say hi to him. He's dressed as a vampire um, in a tuxedo. And I think, wow, that's nice. And um, he says, you know, come back tomorrow. And I'm thinking, okay, this will be nice. You know, I'll come back tomorrow. So I do go back tomorrow. And I say, hey, um, I'm looking for... I don't remember his name now, but he gave me his, his name. And they're like, there's no one here like that. And I said, sure, sure there is. He was here yesterday. He was dressed as a vampire. Long blonde hair, blue eyes, had on one of your tuxedos. And they both were like, um, no, we were here yesterday. We were working. And it, there's no one here like that. No one at all. No one by that name. No one by that description. I'm like, he gave me candy. He told me his name. And they're like, lady. So I'm okay. I leave. And we go home. And my roommate, my roommates and I were talking about it. And man, all the time. And I mean, I don't really believe in vampires. But who was that guy then? Was he a real vampire? One of my roommates believes in vampires. And I don't, I don't know. To this day, I just... I look back on it and I wonder, I kind of doubt myself. I mean, yes, there was a real person there. Maybe it was a trick. I don't know. Moving on. The biggest thing in that house was the electricity, the shadow man. Everybody saw the shadow man. All of my company, all the kids, everybody. And then after we're there, because as you live there or as I live there, it just got worse and worse. So now we hear screaming all the time. And at first it scared me, I was really frightened, and then it became natural. Just heard screaming. It was a woman screaming. Um, we had someone over to paint, and she says, uh, hey, I heard someone scream three times, and then I heard um, a, a crow. I'm like, you heard a crow? Like, yeah, the screaming's normal, we hear it all the time, ignore it, but we haven't heard a bird. She goes, yeah, I heard a, a, a crow call like three times. I'm like, well, that's weird didn't think much of it we had somebody over to fix the attic fan he fell off the ladder he fell into the big plate glass window he cut his arm very badly uh, he'd been there a couple more times the the time before that he dropped the uh, washing machine or maybe it was the refrigerator on his toe and broke his toe um, another time he was there to fix the dishwasher and he got shocked well, this time he fell off the ladder and fell into the 
plate glass window and cut his arm and we called his wife and we called an ambulance and all of that and he said I'm never coming back here this place is cursed and you you kids here are cursed I'm never coming back here uh, that scared us um, my youngest daughter she was a uh, two at the time, came to me and told me that um, my oldest roommate was in, my, my female roommate, was in the bathtub and the bathtub was full of blood. Well, my roommate was not in the bathtub. She was standing next to me. So we can only attribute it to her sleepwalking. Her eyes, the, my daughter's eyes were open. She was looking right at me and she said, you know, uh, we'll call Lisa. We'll call my roommate Lisa. She says Lisa's in the bathtub and it's full of blood. She just sat up in the bathtub of blood. Scared me to death because my roommate was right next to me. Our other roommate, the other female roommate, was at work, and she said Lisa, Lisa, my roommate, who was standing next to me. So I, I'm guessing it was a dream. Um, on our way home one night, um, my my roommate Lisa and I are driving. We go past the bank, and the bank is closed, and we see what looks to be a very large German Shepherd walking across the very well-lit bank parking lot. And we happened to be sitting at a stoplight, so we had plenty of time to look over at the bank. And I said, huh, look, a dog. And she says, yeah. And right then, the dog turns to us, and he smiled. The dog smiled. He showed many teeth his eyes were deep deep black I've never had a dog smile at me but I looked at her and she looked at me and we both clearly had seen the same thing the terror that we felt at seeing that dog smile and show all those teeth and those black eyes is indescribable it just goes through your body she she was driving she ran the red light and as we got some several miles away from the bank, going towards where but home, the place where everything bad happens anyway, and I said, the dog smiled, and she said, yeah. It had black eyes, and I said, yeah. So we both saw it. Absolutely terrifying. So there you go. There's so much that happened that I don't really know where to begin. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, needless to say, haunted life for sure. At, yeah. at first, I was thinking, well, maybe you know, when it was the talk of the the children and the daughter initially, uh, it was well, maybe you're 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 not sensitive uh, to this, and then the daughter clearly is, and that's what we had going on there initially. Uh, but then, as the story progressed, and sounds like she started having more and more experiences herself. Yes, where she was picking up on these things, uh, you know, or these things were just becoming that much stronger. Uh, around her in her life which is I'm kind of leaning towards that well and I wonder how much of it was because of maybe the combination of roommates or somebody within that that group because most of these things happened when she was with someone mm -hmm. I don't know if it was the same someone but she was with someone when almost all of the things that she described happened. sure and, and there was the roommates there for a while there was friends it was the the daughter there was yeah. You know, Right. And most of the time, if, if it's just you that it's haunted, it seems to be a you're the one that's picked on, but then they, they hide it for everybody else. So mm -hmm. nobody believes you. So you really can't tell anybody. Oh. Nonetheless, uh, quite the haunted life. Yes. It very much sounds like it. Thanks for sharing your uh, story with us. Uh, let's do one more caller. Hi. Hey, Brewski's. Been listening to your podcast for about a week now, and I'm hooked. You guys do great. Keep up the good work. Um, so I'm gonna tell you my story, uh, a little backstory for my tale is, um, in 2006, um, I had a close friend commit suicide and it hit me really, really hard. We were really close and I still miss her this day. Um, her name was Kaylee. Anyway, fast forward a few years, um, and I think it was about 2009, maybe 2010, I was living with my girlfriend, now my wife, uh, and a roommate in an apartment. It wasn't necessarily necessarily that old, maybe built in the 70s, um, but for some reason felt very dark. My wife would always complain of something pulling, touching her feet, and shaking the bed when I when I wasn't there with her. Um, and our roommate said she always saw a dark figure that wore a fedora hat 
and a long coat. She felt she said it felt very menacing. Um, around this time, me and my girlfriend um were going through a very hard time in our relationship. Um, we just weren't getting along, stuff like that. Um, as a result, we ended up splitting up for a bit. Uh, I still lived in the apartment, so it was very, uh, definitely very tense. Um, uh, I was very depressed and began to binge drink and fell into a horrible dark place. It's about this time I would uh, regularly have sleep paralysis. Um, I've had it before, but never, never this severe. It happened every night for months. I would fall asleep and be awakened with about three figures around me. Uh, black, no features, very dark. Um, all three would uh, push, push on my chest, and I would sink into the bed so deep I could see the mattress start to surround me. I couldn't scream, couldn't move, but eventually would wake up, pouring in sweat. Now, like I said, this happened every night for months. I would do anything to not sleep. It terrified me so much that this kept happening until one night, um, my friend Kaylee, she came to me in a dream. I, I think, I mean, I can't really remember. She said, don't worry, it's going to be okay. You're, you'll be fine. Um... I talked to her for a bit, just asking, you know, what she, how she was, and where she, where, where she was, and how she was doing. Um, all she said that um, she's okay, um, everything was okay. Mostly telling me just to be strong, and I'll get through it, which eventually I did. Um, me and my gr girlfriend eventually patched things up. I cut back on my drinking a lot. And um, I'd say maybe less than a year we moved out, found another place to live, and everything has been fine since then. No more incidents to report, but that's my story. And I um, hope, uh, hope you guys uh, play it on your podcast, and I um, hope you guys are doing awesome. You guys are great. Keep up with the good work. Um, yeah, have a good day. I think something just took the opportunity of having a, maybe a little bit of a drinking issue and a recent breakup to suddenly just ta-da, mm -hmm. I'm here, you're haunted now. I guess it's, it's I mean, uh, you know, it, it, it's very sad that, that his friend passed away but it's good that uh, there was able to be some some good message that came out of it and mm -hmm. some some coming to the rescue. Yeah. It's better than the, the guy that did the ocean spray uh, ads to just show up in your dreams and just start singing, don't worry, be happy. That would not be as effective. No, it wouldn't be. Remember that? No. Who who did who sang "Don't Worry, Be Happy"? Bob Marley. Was it Bob Marley initially? I think I don't know. There was a guy like in the '80s that did it, and uh, let me look this up. What does this have to do with anything? <laughs> well, I was just thinking because he said that that the friend came and said, you know, don't worry, it'll be okay. Uh -huh. And then when I hear the words "Don't worry," my mind immediately goes. You got a dang and note to note, da -da 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 -da, so don't worry, be happy. I don't know why. I don't remember that. The Don't Worry, Be Happy song? I remember that, but not the way you did it. Maybe because I'm only remembering the Ocean Spray version. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Don't Worry, Be Happy, Ocean Spray. Uh, let's see here. Bobby McFerrin did that version of it. Uh, in the 90s. And uh, yeah, there you go. There was uh, there was quite a few of them. He was dancing around on a beach drinking like cran raspberry. <laughs> and it made everything better. Okay. As long as you have a little cran raspberry, it'll get you right out of that funk. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. I don't know. I, I the, the don't worry is what it, it triggered that in my mind. Okay. So there you go. A little bit of useless knowledge for the day. I have no words. <laughs> That wraps up today's episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. I play it for you. We could sing along, but I don't want to deal we'll with it. get in the, trouble, you know, and it's not worth it for that song. For that song, no. Uh, so there you go. If you like the show, help keep us on the air. Become an EPP extra podcast person. Get all the bonus episodes of our show. Ghostpodcast.com is where you do just that. Thank you in advance for uh, checking that out and uh, helping to keep us on the air. Until next time, for Jenny Bruski, I'm Tony Bruski. Thanks for listening to another episode of Real Ghost Stories Online.